What's good everyone, I'm Zayas, and today I'm here to review Samurai Executioner, aka Kubakiri Asa. This was the second of Kazuo Koike's and Goseki Kojima's several collaborative efforts throughout the years. Kazuo had done some work before on Gogo 13, where he was mostly just learning from Taiko Saito. Unfortunately, Saito did pass away a few months ago, but Gogo 13 is still ongoing with some other manga creators having picked it up. But other than that, neither of the duo had any experience writing manga before they struck gold with Lone Wolf and Cub. Lone Wolf and Cub was a grand and epic tale about a samurai who traveled throughout Edo, Japan to seek revenge on a clan who snatched everything away from him. The series is an undeniable classic. The amazing storytelling throughout the series, the realistic depiction of feudal Japan, the gorgeous visuals, and on top of that, the perfect climax at the end of the series. The series has gotten six movies, two TV series, a couple sequels, a video game, and on top of that, my personal favorite is that it was used in hip hop masterpiece, Liquid Swords. The album had something like five scenes from Shogun Assassin, which is the movie that Lone Wolf and Cub was made into. And there's a big link between hip hop and samurai culture nowadays. I'm thinking of stuff like Samurai Champloo and even Honor Killed the Samurai by Ka. They made some decent manga after this, but Kazuo in particular made some pretty good stuff. He went on to make Crying Freeman, which was pretty iconic, and he also went on to make Bad Bull 34. Samurai Executioner was sort of overshadowed by Lone Wolf and Cub's success. And this is because Lone Wolf and Cub started before Samurai Executioner and was a very similar series to it. Samurai Executioner went from 1972 to 1976, whereas Lone Wolf and Cub went from 1970 to 1976. These series are certainly meant to be interconnected with each other. Both series feature a noble stoic samurai who look pretty similar and Yamada even appears in Lone Wolf and Cub in later chapters. You can see a lot of the same events taking place in both manga, although they're from different perspectives. That means just like Lone Wolf and Cub, this series was carefully constructed to be historically accurate to Edo Japan. The artwork is also stunning. It feels very crisp and powerful. The characters' expressions are done really well. You can notice the apprehension, the sorrow, the joy that a lot of these characters feel. I will admit though he's not the best at doing smiling faces. Sometimes characters will laugh and they'll just look creepy. But it's pretty rare to see characters laugh in this series because this series tells a very solemn tale about characters from different parts of Japan. Yamada is the shogun's executioner and it's his job to execute several people on a daily basis. These characters are from all different walks of life, ranging from rich to poor, but on the verge of death, they all look very similar. There's some pretty brutal stories being told in this series, and it can make even someone like me, who's very desensitized to violence in media, shudder a little bit at certain points. There is also nudity as well in this manga, if you care about that, obviously not a big deal to me. Yamada is the most important character in the series, and he remains calm and collected, despite having to do one of the worst jobs available in human history. He is isolated and shunned by society. He has a very similar demeanor and even appearance to Ogami Ido from Lone Wolf and Cub, but I personally like these type of characters. Although Ogami became a merciless demon so that he could avenge his clan, Yamada is very different. The actions he takes to help the condemned, his desire to understand these criminals, and the kindness he shows to some of these criminals who have done the worst deeds imaginable make him pretty likable as a character. There are also some pretty interesting conversations between characters in this series about the idea of punishment and justice. These conversations make Yamada feel more human, they show that he has his own set of principles and beliefs that he will follow through on no matter what the situation. He's not just some lapdog who will blindly follow his higher-up's orders. 
It felt very genuine when Yamada said that he was hoping for a day when executioners aren't needed anymore, and he continues to do his job because he is needed. The criminals themselves are the foundation of the series. They make it so that things are different in each chapter, and they keep each chapter interesting. But this is a double-edged sword, as eventually this means that you will know mostly what happens in this manga, and it gets pretty repetitive. The events that happen can happen in any order, but these events will happen in almost every chapter in this series. The criminal will tell their tale, Yamada will try to do his best to help them or put them at ease, and afterwards the criminal's head will go flying. It is an enjoyable formula, but it's not a formula that really makes for some sort of long lasting plot. That's why Lone Wolf and Cub was able to go longer than the series because it did have an overarching plotline and I just felt like Lone Wolf was a better series overall. Some reoccurring characters were introduced in this series to help keep it fresh and interesting and although I did enjoy it, it wasn't enough to be some sort of overarching plot. Also Shinko and Sakane did have some cute moments together but I did feel as if the moments with domestic violence in this series were particularly jarring, especially in our day and age. There's no end goal of this manga, which makes it feel like a slice of life manga. Going back to the artwork, it was incredibly brilliant. Everything felt super vivid and alive. It was super dynamic and great at depicting both characters who were noble and higher ups, and also peasants and commoners who are at the bottom of the food chain. It's not a very romanticized depiction of Edo Japan. People are committing atrocities left and right, crime is high, it's just not a great place to live. Poor living conditions, domestic violence, and horrible jobs are all on display in this manga and you look at it right in its face. Some of these stories are more far-fetched than others, but most of the stories in this series really stuck with me. There's corruption, lies, people doing horrible things in this manga, but when you really look at it, you see that these people are just normal people who may have taken a couple steps in the wrong direction. Some of these people were even innocent. But despite all the horrible things, there's still a lot of hope in this manga. In particular, Yamada is the beacon of hope for a lot of these criminals. He's a pretty upstanding man who helps others and looks forward to the future. And despite having to take on some pretty horrible duties, he will still look out for other people. Samurai Executioner really does outline how executions are not an ideal form of punishment in any sort of way, but how people felt that they were necessary at the time. The series just drops off at a random point. There's no real ending to this series because there is no big plotline they have to finish. The ending is rather understandable considering there is no big goal or grand theme. Ultimately the series just wasn't as good as Lone Wolf 2, which you can compare it side by side to pretty easily because they are very much the same series. Yamada does make a reappearance in Lone Wolf and Cub later on, but I wouldn't even consider him the same character, his design is vastly changed, and he is nowhere near as stoic. Samurai Executioner really is a bundle of cautionary tales with a great depiction of feudal Japan. I'm feeling a light to decent 8. Thank you everyone, please like the video if you enjoyed, comment down below telling me some of your favorite series to read recently, or if you've read the series what you thought about it. Thanks and I'll see you in the next one.